Hey guys, welcome back to the Dropping in Surf Show. My name is Rob Case. I'm a paddling technique coach. Today is February 25th, 2021. I'm recording from Belmarine Keys, California. Uh, today, I have a special guest, Coach Chris from Surf Continuum. He is actually recording from Puerto Rico, though he operates out of New York. Uh, and so we're going to talk about coaching. He's a surf coach. He has a really unique way to coach. Uh, he has a fantastic online program and he also co-hosts a podcast podcast called Cootcast. Uh, so we're going to have a little chat with Chris. Hope you enjoy it. Dude. Oh my God. The technological issues I've had over and over again. It's like, I'll never get it nailed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, you're already ahead of the curve for me. But you've been doing it for a while, haven't you? Haven't you done KootCast for a few years? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've done KootCast for a few years. But actually, the reason I have somewhat of a foundation in this is because I grew up doing the sound engineering at my church. No way. So I had like this kind of, you know, like it wasn't like my job. I, but it was my job. And I, I just, I naturally always cared about anything I did. Yeah. So, you know, I started researching mics and like, how do you get good sound and this and that. So the, the first link in the chain to make it like proper is the mic, like a yeah. good mic. So I have an SM58 and then a good preamp. And that's that really handles 99% of it. That's amazing. I gotta, um, but I, I don't even do this for my podcast, actually. The <laughs> intro... Yeah, I just because the thing is like podcasting is all about being able to do it on the spot. And like, like I ran into Skip Brian Sano and I had my little pouch, you know, of two la lavalier mics that plug into my iPhone. And I got that podcast done because of that, not because I had my laptop and my, my preamp and my mic, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I actually only use this when it's, when it's, it's actually realistic. Uh, but for the most part, I just use like good iPhone mics, which is not nearly as good as these mics. Yeah, but you, it gets the job done, like you said. I yeah, mean, I think totally. I think most people that are like, oh, I want to do a podcast or I want to do something, they get hung up on the tech of it. And what I like about your podcast and it's similar to ours, it's it's so raw in so many ways. We're like, oh, just off the cuff, let's go. It's unproduced. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really nice, and I think that's genuine, and it comes through a lot. Um, and totally, it's super valuable information that you guys provide. So that always helps. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, there's yeah. always, for sure, there's always like a uh, a self-consciousness that comes up. You know, it's like, am I like, you know, obviously not everyone is better uh, as good as the one as another one. And, um, you know, you just get super self-critical. I'm sure you do, too. But uh, yeah, no, you're right. You just have to keep doing it. Keep moving forward. Don't think too hard about it because somebody out there is loving it. And that's every time I, I release an episode that I'm like, oh, man, that wasn't good. Yeah. Somebody reaches out and they're like, oh, I loved what you said in this episode. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. really? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> that was a terrible episode. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, I got I got that philosophy from um, an old mentor in my old job um, because we taught classes in, in that uh, in a different field. And he said, hey, listen out of a 30 person class, for some reason, you're always going to get one, maybe two that just didn't like it. Didn't like you, didn't like the class, totally. didn't like the day, right. like didn't like what they were wearing and, it, and it's going to reflect on the evaluations. Um, mm -hmm. And that always stuck with me because I think as humans, we always kind of key in on the one out of like the hundreds that were thousands that we've helped, but the one gets totally. under our skin like crazy. And it's like, it's so true. You just got to let it go and remember all the thousands. And that's why I love, and I'm sure as you, you love getting feedback from clients saying like, oh, you're doing a great job. That's fantastic. And that feeds our egos, but it also yeah, like helps it. us. Yeah, we need it to, <laughs> because if we only heard from the bad people, we'd be like, oh man, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. How'd you guys, how'd you get involved uh, in doing the podcast? Like what, what, what spurred uh, that? Because me and, and, and my buddy Evan, you know, we just, we we just had the same, um, just f like life philosophy. Like, like we just want to chill. We just want to watch the sunset. Like we wanted, we have like a value system of things that is very basic. Like sets each other's company, 
you know, surfing, like simple things. Yeah. And, and we just constantly found ourselves in the same place, the same time talking about, of course, surfing, because we love surfing so much. And we were also both teaching for a big like productions, not production school, but like, you know, the, the big old commercial surf school. But both cared about it. We would really discuss, be like, you know, I really noticed like this helped when I did this or they did this or this is what clicked for them. And just over and over, we would talk about it. And we, we always just love surfing, like to the point where we wanted to honor it and not just produce people who think they could surf, but give them a realistic view of like, yeah, you can do this thing if you want, but here's the true story, like what it's going to take from you. Yeah. And little by little, we started realizing like, wow, we should record this. Like I started getting into podcasts because I love learning, you know, so I would just search anything that I was learning at the time, marketing or, you know, like any old random thing. I'd find a podcast about it and listen. And I was like, huh, we should do this too for yeah. like beginner surfers, like total kooky shit, like the most basic level stuff, you know, like as, as simple as it gets, let's talk about that. And, and that's, that was basically it. It was just, Yeah. Just record what we talked about every night. Yeah. At the, at the very least, record it for posterity's sake. You know, I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. My old, um, when I was in college, I just did surf instruction, just general surf instruction. And like on the beach, we'd have these conversations as instructors, like how can we do something better or just talking about the surf that week. And, and it was so, I wish I could have recorded some of those conversations because totally one, they're just pure entertainment. You know, and yeah. then two, two, they might actually help someone, you know, that's going through the process. So I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think you've done such a great service to the surf uh, community just to record just those conversations. And uh, it's you, funny. I appreciate that. You know, we started our podcast just, uh, just, you know, at the beginning of COVID and it was off the back of a client saying, yeah, you guys should just record your conversations because you guys sound funny when you're talking together. And I was like, is that a good thing that we sound funny? Like, yeah. okay, cool. Right on. <laughs> do you have a, do you have like a favorite episode of yours that you guys have done? Um, no, I guess the answer, the quick answer is no. I, I like every once in a while, I go back and listen to some, I, some of them, I die. I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't like cut that out or something, you know, <laughs> or I, but I, I it, it, in a general sense, uh, I think some of my favorites, shit, I don't know. I really don't. I really don't because it's just all over the place. There's somewhere I feel like we really hit a stride together, me and Evan, you know, just like talking back and forth about something. And we both just have a really strong feeling about it and good words to support that sentiment that's in our heart. Cause sometimes that's the hard thing. Like sometimes I feel like I have a great episode concept, or, uh, you know, idea theme, but it doesn't materialize. Like you can't, you don't articulate well. And then I finished the recording. Like I, I didn't even say what I wanted to say. Right. Um, but I, I love some of the, the rapport I have with the guests. I love the guests because they bring a new, like I know Ev so well and he knows me. So we kind of know how to play off each other, you know, um, and the guests bring a new variable in that you're just like, you know, it's, it, it's a curveball, you know, and, and it, it makes it a little bit more exciting. So some, I really do enjoy the guests and my fa I guess. So my favorite would be when me and Evan both it's rare, but when we both get to do a guest episode together, cause I love the trio. I love yeah. the trio effect. That's really fun. Oh, that's super rad. Yeah. I, I, I understand what you mean by about the guests bringing a different energy than the two of you. And, and you can get some that, they forget about it's being recorded and they just start going and it's the best, you know? Yeah. And I think you, you know, you and I kind of have a very similar mindset in wanting to learn and it's a very genuine, when we're talking with people, we want to learn from them. And when you have a guest, it's like, Oh man, just I'm, I'm absorbing. And I forget that there might be other people listening. Like I kind of always joke with Jim that, we only have like 10 listeners uh, and you know, like nine of them are our family. So, um, but it, like, so it's all for us really. We, and we always ask the questions, but every once in a while we, uh, we get, uh, we get some good questions for, for clients and stuff, but that's rad, man. Um, what, uh, tell me about surf continuum. When, uh, when did that start and, and kind of what, what spurred you? So I think, that? I think we're a uh, full, this will be our fifth, fifth year. So, um, surf continuum came from, well, I majored in education. You know, I went to school 
uh, a kind of against my own will. My parents won the fight, you know, out of high school. I was like, I don't need to go to college. And my mom and dad both felt like, no, you really should. I would, they both look back with me and go like, nah, you didn't, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> But um, no, it gave me an invaluable experience, whether it was what I directly learned in college or not. I learned a lot of things, of course, because like you said, we both love to learn. So you're going to no matter where you are and who you're around. But there's, there's the educational thing. I did find a passion for education. My mother always taught uh, like health it's things. She taught CPR. She kind of started her own business um, back when I was a little grom, like brand newborn. I'm the firstborn. So she started this CPR training thing and she'd run around. We're from Long Island. She'd run around Long Island, you know, teaching these little classes she put together. Uh, so she was an entrepreneur and a teacher, you know, and I guess I kind of just saw her doing that. And I just liked the hustle. I just thought it was cool that she like made it happen, you know, and, and did that. Um, so there's, there's kind of a background there. And then I came out of college, you know, and not really wanting to do the whole traditional education like get a job in a preschool or uh, uh, elementary school. I was elementary ed, by the way. Um, I, uh, I didn't really want to do it. It just felt like force feeding kids information. And, and like, if they didn't get it, like, sorry, too bad. There's 20 other kids. We got to keep moving on. Yeah. So it really turned me off, but I finished the degree. Just, I like to finish what I started. And then I got out of there and, uh, and I found myself teaching surfing with Corey's wave, a really awesome surf school in Montauk. And, and they kill it. They, they're, they're a husband and wife team. They do amazing work. They pump out like so many people, like everyone's stoked, everyone's happy. And it's, it's a really cool operation, but I just, there was for me as an athlete, as an educator and all these things, I wanted to go deeper. You know, it wasn't really okay with me, my, for me personally, you know, yeah. it wasn't like what they were doing is really great, but I was just like, there's more to this, you know, and I grew up surfing and I tell my clients all the time, mostly sucks. Like it's not all great. It's not always fun. In fact, mostly it's not. Yeah. And I wanted people to know that side, you know, I didn't want to keep selling this uh, experience that kind of was misleading. Mm -hmm. And so finally I just fed up you know, because that's just my personality with anything. I want it to be my way. I want to do it my way, whether it's a flaw or a, a good thing. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to start something. I want to teach people. I only want to do one-on-ones, no groups, none of this mayhem in the lineup. None of this will figure out how to get you on a wave, even if it's too big or there's no waves at all or whatever. You know, I want it to be like truly what surfers do. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the name surf continuum came from something that Evan actually brought to the table, which was, um, the sense of this cyclical, very seamless style of surfing. It doesn't have to be technical per se, just seamless, just effortless. You know, yeah. you watch a guy like Evan surf and he doesn't even wear a leash in, in situations where you're like, I couldn't even imagine not wearing a leash, <laughs> you know? And, and the reason he can do that is because he's so, uh, like passionate about control. So on top of like the way he surfs his kickouts, he's he'll, he'll pass up sections that you want to hit or do something fun over, but you might fall. He'll pass it up because he wants to have control of his board more, yeah. you know? And, and so you can see that from the beach when you see the general picture of him surfing, you're like, wow, that dude is always on his board. He's always moving. He's either on a wave or paddling back out. And so that cycle, that, that continuous ongoing repetition to me was a continuum. So I was like, oh, that's a surf continuum, you know, and it's really nothing more than basic skills. And, and to just take it one step further, I saw that, that theory in so many other things, you know, like in a car engine, for example, it seems so complex, but if you understand, it's really just a couple basic principles going over and over again, you know, yeah. revolutions per minute, just a simple cycle over and over again. And I was like, that's what surfing can be for regular people who are not trying to do air reverses, who are not trying to do vertical lip hits. They just want to ride waves and enjoy themselves and not be a hazard to other people, especially when you travel, you know, because you want to travel too. And you want to somehow, some way be accepted by the locals, or at the very least tolerated, you right. know, as a guy who just gets off your waves, knows how to respect the area, get your waves down the line maybe, and just do this little circle in control and in a respectful way that you can't help but look at and be like, that's okay. I'm okay with that guy doing that over there. Um, so in so many words, 
you know, the surf continuum is just my brainchild of like simple, basic skills done over and over and over and connected very seamlessly. Yeah, no, I really like that. And I like the way that you present it. It's always these simple uh, kind of baseline skills that a lot of times are overlooked, but are, are so incredibly important. Like just like spinning your board. I saw a video you talking about spinning your board and I was like, gosh, you know, like I, I was fortunate enough to grow up on water and I like took an old board and I'd spin all the time. And so I learned it like second nature to me it's I'm totally jaded with the whole thing. Like I, I didn't even know that that was a skill you had to learn. And, and it, it really is something that you need to learn. And it's that small fundamental that then you make refinements to later. And, and you're dead on any, any sport, you know, I'm a big basketball fan. So you look at the guys in the NBA, like they're just doing the fundamentals over and over and over again. Well, obviously we're, I'm a Steph Curry fan cause we're Bay area. But if you watch Steph's like warmups, his warmups are all fundamental things. And then he starts doing refinements to them and, and kind of flaring them out and put some style into them. But it always starts with the foundation. And it's, uh, I crazy. love that you said that like the warm ups because one thing as an athlete, you know, I, I was a wrestler in college, uh, in high school, I'm sorry. And, and, and among other sports, but wrestling really taught me the discipline to not get overwhelmed with the match itself, the three minutes in the match, but the very most simple, basic things you do in that match and to, to break them open and to look at every little piece and to slow it all down and to do it with such a deliberation. And obviously you don't do that in the match, but in practice you do. Yeah. And for like two or three hours. Yeah. So you get to the point where you're almost like exhausted with doing it so slow. But then when you do it in a match and you see how it all came back together and happen so fluidly and then you can even add like you said that little flair a little bit of style and and embellish on it it's like that's all any good athlete is doing is taking a basic thing that they practice so hard so well and just doing it perfect with perfect execution and even making it seem slow you know yes and oh, and that gosh. was like oh how Nobody in surfing is teaching that, at least not in my experience, and especially not for beginners. Yeah. Nobody's, everybody that's involved with teaching beginners is just focused on getting them a ride so they're stoked. Yeah. But nobody's like, how well can you turn your board around and seamlessly just pop that thing under you and, and land in paddling position and go off onto that wave? Like for me, I call it a sitting turn because I, I don't know what else to call it. You know? <laughs> so I, def I was like, I'm going to just call it whatever I, I think it looks like. Yeah. But the sitting turn for me is such a massive fundamental of board control yeah. because when you do that so well, then, and this is what's unique to surfing, you can focus on your environment, on, on the space you're in and this unique wave that's different than any other wave you've ever caught in your life and any other waves that ever came through. Yeah. So, and, and when you're doing your turn, instead of thinking like, okay, let me get my board around and pointing in the right direction. Instead, you're thinking about what is this wave doing behind me every moment that I, I set it up because it's changing all the time. And if you're not completely focused on it, you know, you're thinking about some basic skill, then the wave's going to do something behind you. And eh, maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll do good. Maybe you won't. But it's always going to be arbitrary. It won't be intentional. Yeah. So I really seek to bring intention and like, it, it, like being in tune with the ocean with, with that fluency in your fundamentals. Yeah. I, I you know, it's awesome because everything in surfing happens so quickly and good surfers do a lot of things unconsciously. So I always tell surf coaches like, you know, I'm like, man, I got an easy job. I make someone paddle in a pool and I, I, I can have them do the same repetition thousands of times and start to modify that, that movement and change that movement because I got lots of reps. You guys don't like, how do you coach someone in the water is it all like hey listen we're going to do all this stuff over and over and over again so when you're in the water now you can start thinking about the wave like like what's your approach to that because there's so much to 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 teach them totally that's such a good question um because you're right that's that's basically a problem i discovered i'm like okay how am i going to do this how am i going to bring the reps and the practice to a place where you only get so many chances. And basically the answer is as kooky as it felt to me was to make them do it. Even if there wasn't a wave there, you oh, know, nice. basically create yeah. drills, you yeah. know, and it's still my vision to actually have a training class where there's zero waves. There's literally, you're not going to catch a wave 
we're going to do these drills that I've, I've come up with over and over again. If it's a sitting turn to sprint, uh, a sitting turn to sitting turn to sitting turn to sitting turn, and just how well can you transition from the sit to the paddle? Just all these things that you're doing surfing, but take that little tiny millisecond and, and expose it into, or, or blow it up into a big hour long training class. Yeah. Um, you know, that's because that's what you do in wrestling. That's what you do in basketball. You know, you don't play a game over and over. You don't wrestle a match over and over. You, yeah. you take a single leg takedown over and over and you do it in slow motion, yeah. you know? So that's what I want to do in surfing. And it's always seen as so kind of ridiculous and kooky, you know, because no one's really done it. But the thing is, that's the stuff that you really need to practice. Yeah. So to answer your question, like with a beginner, when I get a total beginner or, or not a total beginner, but a totally new person to me, they're always going to be somewhere in the low level of surfing. But instead of going out with the goal of catching waves, I go out with the goal of practicing those things. And so I'll test them out. I'll, I'll take them wide, way off into the shoulder or the channel where they're definitely not going to catch a wave. And I'll just have them set up waves and go for it as if they could catch it. Nice. You know, and they go out and they paddle and I watch how they set up the wave. I watch how they do their sitting turn and starting from the most basic, basically how we get into the water and paddle out. That's where I start watching. Oh, man, and if they don't so get on their, yeah. yeah, totally, totally. I mean, that's what end. you see on kook slams all the time. Yeah. <laughs> people who can't get in and out of the water, you know, it's yeah. people who don't understand how to go through that little section of shore break or something. So that's where I start watching. And that's where I stop if I see a problem and I'll spend a whole lesson having somebody go into the water with their surfboard and then crack out and do it again. Yeah. And if they don't do it, they come right back out and we keep doing it and doing it until they learn how to grab their board and like manage their board and use their board, not just manage it, but use it to help them get through the waves. Yeah. And then it's, we'll go to paddling and how it's we paddle so amazing. Out. It's the, it's the non sexy side of surfing. Totally. But, it, but totally. it's like, and, and I deal with, I'm in that space all the time, like paddling, like nobody wants to paddle. Like that's the worst push me. No, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to push you in the way. <laughs> oh God, like, get out of here. This is that's why I respect you so much is you, you have such a, I've, I, I told you this before, but uh, just for the sake of the recording, like I found you, you know, and your program because I was so interested in like, how can I paddle better? How can I be more efficient? And when I saw what you did and focused only on paddling, I was like, damn, this guy gets it. He knows. Yeah. And it was, it wasn't something that, I thought people wanted because it wasn't sexy, you know, because it wasn't popular. Standing was popular, riding waves, like you're saying. And it's crazy. Like finally when people responded to a few of the early videos, I was like, well, really, you want to, you want to hear about this? Like, this is bizarre, <laughs> but, but, you know, talking to you, it's like such reinforcement, all the, the sitting turn, the getting out and getting in the paddling, all the little things add up to the, the whole experience. And you, yep. you can have uh, somebody that's been years, decades into surfing and get all that wrong and always have a bad surf. And then yep. you change one thing about that. And there it's all of a sudden it's a new experience. Some of my favorite, some of my favorite uh, session experiences I have are with somebody who's been surfing a long time and somehow, you know, cause I don't market myself as, uh, uh, like I don't even market myself as an intermediate surf coach, you know, because you'd be surprised what people consider intermediate level surfing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm a beginner surf coach. I teach people how to get started or help them along at the beginning of their journey. But every once in a while, somehow I find somebody who has been surfing or, or someone finds me who has been surfing for 10, 12, 15, some 20 years. Yeah. And I love when they come to me and they think we're going to be talking about their cutback or their high line or, or that stuff. And I'm like, no, dude, you're sitting turns wrong. Your paddling techniques off. You can't prone turn into this wave. I call a prone turn when you like approach a peak, but continue paddling and, and change turn, directions yeah. with your board. Yeah. You know, you're bogging your rail while you're doing that. And then as the wave lifts you, it bogs more. And that's why you have such a clumsy takeoff. Oh. Um, but those are my favorite sessions because they're like, wow. And, and, and we were, we were kind of hinting at this before without saying it, but when you enforce, reinforce the bottom stuff, the foundation, it makes everything else stronger. Yeah. You know, when your takeoff is better, your cutback's going to be better because it's going to be cleaner. You're going to find your footing better. You're going to, everything's going to feel more calm and slow so that your, your cutback isn't just rushed or, you know, you, frantic. Yeah. Surfing is almost um, like improvements in surfing is I liken it to just millisecond changes. 
because like you're saying, just the prone turn, for example, and not bogging that rail gives you that split second more time of peacefulness at the beginning. And then mm. everything carries over, you know, like, yes, I, yes, yes. I, I have a, a general rule. I hate it when uh, people take more than eight strokes to get into a wave, like in mm. total, like very interesting. I, te I teach a three stroke burst at the very mm. end, but you can take anywhere from zero strokes to eight. But if you take more than eight, you're getting on my nerves because <laughs> it's just like you end up getting behind it. And even if you get it, now everything's rushed. And then once yes. everything's rushed, now your brain and all this anxiety builds up in you and your bottom turn is going to be off or your, your setting your trim line is going to be off and everything's going to be off. And, and you're going to end up not having a good time. And I say that because I've done it. Like... I've done it a million times where I stay with it. I stay with it. I stay with it. I'm like, I got this. I got this. I got this. And you get it. Right. And it's like an ego thing. And then you're like, why did I get that? That was just such a waste of my energy. I should have just <laughs> gone to the back of the line and, and done it over again. Like, I love that. Yeah. We, me and Ev say all the time, it shouldn't be that hard. No, no. It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't. It should be fun. It should be fun. That's, that's why we got into it, right? Like we got into surfing for the fun of it. Uh, and I, I think we, you know, we, what we do, we can get really serious about all these little things, but at the end of the day, it's about going out and having fun. And the best way to have fun is to, to improve each time and to not yeah. get frustrated. So yeah, that, that's what totally. I found um, when I started doing the, the, the paddling thing. It, one of my main reasons was like, people were like, well, why are you teaching people paddling? That means like more people are going to be able to catch waves. Like I got comments like, stop teaching paddling. Don't like, don't teach people how to catch more waves. And I was like, really? what? It's like, in my mind, I totally kind of understood where they're coming from as a very selfish surfer. But at the same time, like if someone can save energy, they're going to be less frustrated. And that, and you know, when you're with somebody that's super frustrated, people feel that in the lineup and that, that frustration is like a cancer in the lineup. And then there's mm. just all this battling. But when people are like having a good time catching waves and there's, there's plenty to go around and there's this vibe, that's the best time to surf, even with totally. strangers. I 100% so agree with that. And a part of that is fatigue. You know, fatigue drives frustration. Um, uh, fatigue with taking too long to turn or to line up or, or to, to, to not get out the right way, you know, like just expending all this extra energy that they see other surfers. And then the other thing is comparing themselves to other surfers, but they see other oh, surfers yeah. getting out so easily. Like, why can't I get out so easy? <laughs> and, and then they're like, they're already like up here by the time they get out of the waves. And it's like, dude, just take a beat. This is supposed to be fun. You know, yeah. just take yeah. a beat. That's rad, man. I'm stoked on, um, on that. Um, what, what would you say like personally, uh, you know, how has surf travel affected you? Cause like I contacted you and you're like, Oh yeah, I'm in SoCal. No, I'm in Mexico. No, bro. I'm in, now I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, what does surf travel mean to you? And why do you Oh do yeah. Uh, you know, I always just love travel just in general. I think it's so educational. I think it's so mind opening to see like the world, you know, not to get caught up in your little fishbowl, and to think like, okay, this is how the world works. When you travel, you see the way other people live. You see the way other things happen and it opens your mind. It, it like, it, it presents new perceptions, perspectives, I'm sorry, to you. And, and I just think it's really healthy. You know, yeah. that's one, something I think about all the time. Um, and then surf travel, of course, is just that allure of, you know, the endless summer, just finding perfect waves around the world, that pursuit, you know, it's, it's kind of like fishing, you know, it's, they call it fishing, not catching. <laughs> it's the pursuit. It's always trying that really drives you. It's not knowing you're going to get it that, that drives you. It's trying to get it that drives you. Um, but this, yeah, this has been a very blessed year for me you know, as the brand grows and I, I've, my, my vision for the surf continuum is to go a little more digital because as you know, coaches only have so many hours in their day. Yeah. You only have so much energy to give your clients and your students. And I do really care about my clients and their students. So like I have, like, it costs me energy. Like people ask me, this is the funniest thing. They're like, Oh, how can you surf all day? How can you paddle all day with these people? And so I'm like, that's not the part that makes me tired. Mm -hmm. The part that makes me tired is caring so much, mm -hmm. you know, like
and like really giving my whole heart to them and saying like, you know, and not getting weary by the end of the day, like, yeah, 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 that was good, blah, 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 you know, because I could paddle all day long. You know, you and I know how to paddle by this point where I can, cont- I could paddle to France if I wanted to, yeah. but, um, that, you know, like caring is, is really, so anyway, the, the, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm, I, I, okay, I need to figure out digital aspects to my business. And as you know, the podcast grows and the membership site grows, it allows me to do a little bit more virtually. I'm still working on the balance too. Cause you know, you, you travel and then you have fun and you're like, Oh, two weeks is gone. I gotta like release a podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, but I'm figuring it out. So anyway, this is the first year that I really got to travel a majority of the winter and I'm from New York. So anybody that's got something to say to me about like, Oh, you should stay put. It's like, no, I need to get the hell out of there. <laughs> I've surfed New York winters for the last 20 years of my life and it's rough. It's tough. We get great waves, but not necessarily all that often. The windows are small. It's really tough to, to nail it. You have to be on it. You have to nail those offshore windows. It's usually a half a day swell event, if that. So, you know, I've just been really blessed to have people like Evan in Northern Baja, my cousin in, in Southern California, friends in Puerto Rico, like places I can go and, and travel and still kind of run surf continuum digitally um, because, you know, the one-on-one stuff kind of dies down where I'm, where I'm based. Yeah. Um, that being said, now that the digital things are happening, now people are finding out in these other areas and want to work with me personally when I'm there. Yeah. So it's like, it's like one hand washes the other, you know, the, like it, it, you sharpen the blade, iron sharpens iron. So like by building the digital side, also my personal coaching has built too. And, and I, like I said, I just feel so blessed to be able to go to Puerto Rico and have people be like, Oh, you're there. Okay. I want to work with you here. Can you show me, you know, and, and just do my thing wherever I go. And it's, 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 it's like so exciting yeah. to, to feel the growth and see it happening and, and be able to go places and, and work with people and work on videos and work on podcasts, recording with you, you know, a couple thousand miles away from home. It's like, yeah, how sick is that? Yeah. That's so different than when we were growing up, man. Uh, that's, yeah. It's awesome. I love your answer to that though. The surf travel thing. I mean, it was first, like, I love learning the cultures and, I love learning about the different people. And that is, uh, that's a true veteran traveler's true answer. Like deep down, like, a, like when people first get into surfing, they, they have the endless summer image in their brain that I'm going to travel halfway around the world and I'm going to get perfect waves. Well, no, you're not. There's no guarantee of that. And it's, it's unfortunate in today's culture where people are expecting that more and more. Whereas when you do travel, like, like you and I do, where it's really about the journey and it's very cliche to say it's about the journey, not the destination, but um, you learn so much about, it's not about the surf. It's about the people you're with, the people you meet, the cultures you learn about uh, more so, but, but it's weird with, with newer surfers now having this image of perfect surf, especially with wave pools and stuff there, you're guaranteed good surf right? But you don't get totally. any of the culture. It's great for technique. I'm sure like you could do these reps, but you, it's not a surf trip. It's like, it's, it's, it's so different. And so how do you like, do you ever go with clients on trips? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I guess I'm so blessed because I, I built this into the whole brand, the expectation of what sur- it means to be a surfer and, and surf and surf travel, you know? Um, so I never feel this stress about finding great, you know, um, because, and, and always you find a great time. You always find an experience. You find what's available to you, but that's, what's being an, an open-minded, a positive surfer and, um, and, and the, and how to find waves, like how to try, even if you don't get them, how to try and find waves, you know, look at wind maps, look at swell maps and put it together. Be like, well, look, the wind's going to be offshore in this little corner or this little cove. There's this swell. It might wrap in. Sometimes it doesn't actually, probably I never kept track of ratios, but most times it probably doesn't, Mm -hmm. you know, but just that experience of looking at the map and understanding what you're trying to do. That's an educational experience right there. Yeah. You know, and whether you score the waves or not is, is really not the issue. Like you said, it's not about that destination of getting the waves. It's the journey of how do you do it? How do you read maps? Um, That being said, 
the better you get at that stuff, the more you do score waves. And the more optimistic you are about condition and wave sizes, the more times you do score. So like when I score like knee high, waist high, clean waves and nobody around, it's like part of it, they're looking at you, you know, they're looking at how do you respond to what you find? Right. So if I'm like, oh my God, we found it epic, knee to waist high, nobody around, this is great. We got mid lanes, we got long boards, we're gonna have a great time. Yeah. That's it. There it yeah. is. You, you, you won. You scored. And, and what I love is that it keeps teaching me too to not get jaded on that, yeah. to enjoy those waves too, you know? And, and especially now that I grew up a shortboarder. So now that I ride mid lanes and longer boards, it really does make it easy to look at little waves and be like, that's epic. I can't wait to surf it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. In the age of COVID where a lot of people have opted not to travel during that, it's you can take those same skills that you're talking about, about reading maps to your own local break or just in the general area and, and learn the same things and almost have a staycation surf trip. Totally. And I, I've been, I've been doing this with my buddies lately. Uh, we, we just, we started with camping like three hours South of us. And then it turned into like two hours South of us to like Santa Cruz. And then it was like, Hey, let's just go to our local break on a day that like we had a day off together and like just hang out all day, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's become this kind of like mini surf trip because all of us are dads and we can't take 12 days off to go to Indo or 14 days off to go to Indo anymore. Um, but it's, you can, even those that are listening that, that are like bummed out, they can't travel or they won't travel um, for certain reasons. And I totally understand that you can still have a surf trip at home, you know, with yep. your friends and you can still learn a lot of those things. That's um, such a good point. That is such a good point because you really, you should have, before you get all wrapped up in surf travel, you should have your local region pretty wired. I yeah. think, yeah. I think you should really know the nuances in wind directions and wind angles, uh, um, swell angles, directions, period, like all that stuff you know, and it doesn't all have to come together all the time, like we said before, but you just have to know like, oh, this direction is really great for this spot and the wind might be just okay. Let's go check it out. Yeah. You know, let's go see, let's go like, because, and that's where you score. Like the, the yeah. true scores are when you have a hunch and yeah. they pan out. Yeah. You know? yeah. I love and it. It can when be right line, in your backyard. Oh, I love it when surf lines like fair at OB yeah. and it, <laughs> oh, we get out there and it's favorite. going off, you know, and we're like, yes. <laughs> like, nobody ever stayed home <laughs> oh that that reminds me of an episode we did it was uh uh something about right because it was back when on the east coast swell info when it was like doing really well was my favorite surf uh forecast now i use Surfline mostly but they would have red green blue you know like for bad mediocre great and I, I remember, wow, now I can't remember the episode, but it was something about red being the new green, you know, like when you see red, <laughs> that's the time oh, to go. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. So here's, here's something like anybody that is itching to go on a surf trip and they haven't gone on a surf trip yet, but they have not dialed their local break yet. Here's what you got to remember. If you go on that surf trip and your local break is going off and where you ended up is total dog of a surf break. <laughs> Then you've learned your lessons. And so <laughs> do not leave until you get your local break wired. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Even just knowing the season, get to know the yeah. season. When does your area fire up? When is it most likely for storms to be coming through and, yeah. and things like that? Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. I love, that, I love that hurts. travel. I love it. But um, yeah, I love, I love it when I score at home too. Oh, uh, well, that, uh, you know, one of the big questions I get, just from, you know, like sitting, waiting for sets with clients, like, oh, where's your favorite, where's your favorite place to surf? Or what's your favorite surf spot in the world? And my answer is always the same home, home when it's good, you know, when it's on and it's good. And I know, you know, I, cause I know, I know how to change two jetties over and get better waves because the, the angle of that beach is just slightly better for the wind to be a little more offshore. Like, I, when I travel, I, I do enjoy it, but I don't know to go down the beach a hundred yards or up the beach a hundred yards or just around the corner. You know what I mean? Like I, I can only do the generalized thing. 
but I've been surfing my home area so much and exploring and walking up and down and just stumbling upon things that I really know it well. So like when there's, I I just feel so dialed in when it gets good. And whenever I'm traveling and I see that home's firing, I'm like, oh, (laughs) damn, like it hurts a little bit. It hurts just a smidge. Uh, It's so funny because you can get that same excitement on a surf trip (laughs) at your home break on the day of the decade. Like we just had that, you know, we've had some great swell the last uh, in uh, December, January and great conditions here. Um, and there has been this one sandbar that I grew up, you know, surfing and it was, it was a dog of a sandbar. Like you go there to just kind of learn, you know, just get reps, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and for some reason for these two days in December, it was the best I've ever, it was like ring con. And I'm like sitting there going like having the most time and everybody we're surfing with are all our local friends. Like, and we're all from all the different areas and we're all have descended upon the sandbar because word has gotten out. And that those two days have been the best surf that I've had in, in decades, like just over and above surf trips. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, the best, the best scores of my life. Well, I actually got really lucky this winter down i surfed the best waves of my life for the first time ever away from home okay but up until this winter for the last 20 plus years of my surfing my best surfs my best barrels my best turns and my best everything has happened an hour or two of home if not five minutes from home well now i want to know where where you were for your best wave away it was baja it was northern baja and we went down camping in the desert where there's this dude it's literally i couldn't even tell you if i wanted to the name of this place like it literally had no name it was just it was just one random little point that we strolled across and we were like oh look there goes a tubing wave oh there's another tubing wave oh (laughs) it's happening again let's camp here tonight (laughs) (laughs) yeah i love that that's the typical baja adventure that's great but that really you know what that really gives perspective to what we were saying before about surf travel and finding perfect waves because i've been doing this for a long time like this is the first year i've done it so extensively for so many months in a row but i've been traveling and surfing a lot a lot in all those 20 plus years of doing it this was the first time I ever actually scored waves. That was the best of my life. The first time ever. Otherwise it was all at home, knowing where to go, knowing where to be and, and getting the best waves right where, you know, where it's my local spot. That's crazy. Especially if you, if you start out that way, you then travel has to be about something else, you know, and that's the right way to approach it. it. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. Um, Well, I don't want to take you, to take too much of your time. Uh, one more question though. Um, what, what's your favorite thing about surf coaching? Like what has brought you joy as being a coach? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I said, I really do enjoy education. I think I see it as an art form, you know, like how do you impart knowledge and experience to somebody else so that they can get it faster than it took you to get it through experience. And for me, that's an art that's like, that's tough to do. And sometimes I feel I do it better than others. So that I think just that in itself is like, how do I do this as simply as possible without over talking? Cause I feel like that's one of my flaws, you know, like to talk and talk and talk and try again and again to say the same thing over in a new way until I see their face light up with the yeah. like, Oh, I got it. You know, the aha moment. Yeah. Right. Right. So to try and do it really well, really simply, I really enjoy the, the characteristics it teaches you to have, like patience, um, you know, and, and then, you know, the ultimate, like when they find, when it comes all to them, when everything they've been trying to do happens, or even just the one little thing they've been trying to do happens and seeing the joy in their face, you know, it's, it, that's really exciting for me. Um, yeah, that is, it's as simple as that. I yeah. Think. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, don't get that when you're teachers to when you show an aha moment, that's like gold, like platinum mm-hmm. for a teacher. Like that's the best. And yeah, and it's not always riding the wave. In fact, it's it's infrequently riding the wave for me. Yeah. Like when they get a great wave, I feel like cool, good. That's not the moment that I'm like cheering out the back, like with my fist raised, like, yeah, you did it. For me, it's when they like spin and turn under the lip. And like you said, they don't need 25 paddles to catch the wave. They, they paddle to perfect position, spin and turn and get the wave with a couple strokes and they're in. Yeah. That's like, 
you got it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you do on the wave, that's your journey. You'll, you know, how you ride waves, how you enjoy the wave, whether you stand there in the pocket the entire wave or just, or, or do cutbacks or try and turn or fall or fall even, you know, I don't care about that. I yeah. care about how you get the wave. I care about how you finish the wave. And I care about all those parts around. So that's where I really cheer. Like we, we have a great new student, Coach Evans, been working with over in, um, in California. And she, she gets it so hard because she, she found us through the podcast. So she knows it's not all about just riding the wave. So yeah. when she turtle rolls and gets through a three wave set and never loses her board, she looks at him or, uh, you know, us and just like, yes, I did it. You know, like I stayed in control and, and it stokes us out so much <laughs> that's because awesome. that's what we want people to be excited about. Yeah. You know, the, the little parts in surfing that really make you a great surfer that you don't increasingly see in the lineup. You know, yeah. it's bumming me out when I see everybody bailing their boards and ditching in the middle of the crowd. It's like, yeah. oh my God, how is there not more ambulances at the beach? Uh, I, I was laughing so hard while you were saying that because I just, yesterday I was with a client and, and I had him in the pool and I was lit, watching the underwater view of the arm stroke. And there was just this one angle that he, we'd been working on with his arm. And I was like, yes. And I like freaked out. And he like, he like almost <laughs> fell off this board. And he was like, what? And I was like, it was awesome. You did it perfectly. Did you feel that? Like I was, I was going out of my skin and it was just because of that one little thing. And yep. 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 Uh, I can totally relate. You he'll know? never, he'll never understand, <laughs> but uh, that's right. And uh, what I was going to say was that your parent, you know, your parents made you go to college, right? Get your degree. And, and they were wrong. They, they were saying, Oh no, you need this. Well, they think and then they're later wrong. on. And then later on they said, yeah, you probably didn't need that. Well, as a parent myself, we don't know what the F we're doing. Like, like, <laughs> Like I, I didn't realize that my parents didn't know what, what they were doing until I became a parent. And now I'm uh, like, dude, I have no idea what's going on. I better, like <laughs> I know what I'm doing, you know, doing something. So, so, uh, that's so yeah. sweet. I'm yeah. Yeah. That's so break. funny. Cause yeah. 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 Of course. Totally. My mom, she said it to me multiple times. This is so much later. Now I'm 33 and she's like, you were so right. I didn't need to force you to go to college. You blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, nah, ma, you actually it all worked out great you did yeah. just fine you know and yeah, like yeah. it's it's so sweet how much they care and they they are so passionate about what you think you what they think you need to do yeah. it's all in love it's all in good spirits so like it's good enough that's all it takes to be a good parent yeah yeah and just ride the wave and it it will uh it'll take you somewhere right? <laughs> right on very cool man thanks chris i appreciate it we'll uh we'll stay in touch and uh, let me know when you're in Northern California, man. We'll have to get together and surf. Dude, I cannot wait. Ever since I knew about your program, I wanted to come and do your paddling technique training. I want to like hear from you. I want to get like technical and deep about it. We'll do it. I'm we'll do so it. into it. Well, so um, how do people it. get a hold of you? Uh, just go to surfcontinuum.com and, and that's the best. Yeah. Life? So, um, you know, it depends what you want to do. If you just want to listen to the podcast and hear our kooky back and forths, you know, that's on any podcast directory, Spotify, Apple, and that's podcast, Kootcast, Google, right? Kookcast. Yep. Kookcast nice. surf name. education. Um, you know, we have, we're working, I built it myself. I taught myself web development. So it's not it's just all right <laughs> you know good. It's but it, good. it's just my videos of me overdubbing some narration of videos of us surfing sometimes you know and i don't have a filmer i have a solo shot so it's just sometimes a windy shaky video of like one of us catching me diving into one of these small little nuances and that's a, like a cheaper option um and i see it more as a way because we have all these podcast listeners who are like how can we support you we want to support you you know and i don't want to just take money i just i want to give something back so that's kind of my way of doing that like here's a nice. couple videos i answer questions in video format and i try to get more personal with my members and then of course um the you can fill out an application if you want to work with me on my website on the about page or coach evan who's all actually I, I he's a better coach than me like he is <laughs> When I like watch him coach or listen to him, I'm like, that's what my coaches, my best coaches in my life were like, yeah. very strict, very stern, very on it about what you need to do. Not mean, but just, you know, Honestly. unforgiving, like you yeah. need to do this and that's what it takes. And I'll be your friend on the beach, but right now I'm going to force you to do this. Anyway, if you're with one of us, you can fill out an application on the website. It's all on the website. You can find cool. it all from the surfcontinuum.com. 
Nice. Nice. Well, make sure people uh, reach out to you because it's, you got an awesome program. So thanks um, so much, Rob. Let me know when you're out on the West coast again and uh, we'll get together. Will do for sure. It's, it's in my, it's in my plan. Rad. Well, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, safe travels home and I uh, hope you get waves. Thanks so much, brother. You too. All right. See ya.